Hi friends, how are you today? My name is Bailey Sarian and today is Monday, which means it's Murder, Mystery, and Makeup Monday. Okay, <laughs> theme song. Um, if you're new here, hi, my name is Bailey Sarian and on Mondays I like to sit down and talk about a true crime story that's been heavy on my noggin and I do my makeup at the same time. If you're interested in true crime and you like makeup, I would say, hey, subscribe because I'm here for you on Mondays, yeah. If you're curious to know what I'm using, I'll list it down in the description box down below. But other than that, I will shut up and get to today's story. Cause it's one of those, it's one of those, okay? Today, we'll be covering a story that's all about lying. Ugh, liars, huh? I hate them. Today is about a guy who lied so much that once people started piecing together the truth, I guess he felt like murder was the only way out. Yep, here we are with one of these psychos. So I came across this story like back when it was happening and it was just like, oh, what, what, what? These stories will never ever make sense to me, ever. It's just, what, what? Chandler Halderson, have you heard of him? Okay, well, let me tell you. Chandler was born to his parents, Bart and Krista Halderson. He was born on like uh, March 15th, 1998. He was their second son. He had an older brother named Mitchell who was a year older. And the family they lived in Windsor, Wisconsin. And I guess this town is about like 30 minutes outside of Madison, Wisconsin. Bart and Krista, these are the parents, Mitchell and Chandler, the kids, they were like a pretty typical American family. You know, yeah. Krista, the mother, she worked in customer service. Bart, the dad, worked for an international accounting firm. And I mean, from by all accounts, the they were like a really close family. They were very involved in each other's lives and just seemed really, like the parents seemed proud of their sons, which makes it that much worse. The family also, they owned a cabin that they would go to for like weekend trips or weekend getaways. And it was Krista's grandparents' cabin that they had built in the 1940s. And then it was passed down to Krista and her family. So this they would use as their like retreat. Cute, nice, lovely. Just a very like all American picture we're painting here, aren't we? In 2021, Chandler was 23 years old and he was living with his parents. He was attending at this time, Madison College. And then while he was attending school, he was working at um, an insurance firm part-time. He also had a girlfriend, her name was Catherine. And at this point they had been dating for about two years. Catherine would later say that she and the family, they all got along like really well. They would all hang out together. They would play games, they would talk. It was just like a really, they were a nice family. Also going on to say that they were just fun, lovely people all around. So everything appeared all fine and dandy. I mean, that is until the lies Chandler was telling started to fall apart. So Chandler was supposedly getting his degree from Madison College. He was telling his girlfriend and his parents that he was attending school online because this was during COVID. So he's attending school online. At some point, Chandler's parents asked to see like a school transcript. They wanna see, you know, how he's doing. They wanted to see his grades and make sure that everything was going smoothly. So when they questioned him, Chandler's like, oh yeah, no problem. And gives them, his parents, contact information for a few different administrators at the school. But what they didn't know was that Chandler had actually flunked out of Madison College years earlier. So he couldn't like give over any actual contact information or he would be found out. So you know what Chandler did? Chandler made fake email accounts and had conversations with himself and with his parents through these fake email accounts, pretending to be administrators. These accounts provided false information about Chandler's enrollment at the school and even gave excuses as like when um, they couldn't provide exactly what his parents were requesting. 
So when Chandler's dad, Bart, began like requesting official transcripts from the school, Chandler created a fake email account from a man named Daniel Spleeth. Or Spieth. Spieth. Yeah. Spieth claimed to be Chandler's counselor at the school. He even like set up a Zoom meeting with Bart and Chandler so they could finally like get to the bottom of like this ongoing transcript issue. Bart and this Spleeth guy, they had gone back and forth like several times trying to get this whole Zoom thing set up, trying to get to the bottom of this whole situation. Like he just wanted transcripts to make sure his son's doing okay, you know? The Spleeth guy is like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do a Zoom, don't worry, like we're gonna set this up. So then finally, when it comes down to like the day when they're about to Zoom, the Zoom call, this guy Spieth, he had told Bart that one of his family members had come down with, with COVID, so they would have to reschedule. Bummer. After being put off and put off, eventually the Zoom meeting with Daniel Spieth was eventually canceled because, well, The truth is that Daniel Spieth was completely made up, but Bart didn't know this yet. And he wasn't gonna give up. I mean, he was like, okay, I'll just talk talk to another administrator at the school. So he talks to somebody else and they too like set up Zoom meetings, but at the last minute, the Zoom meetings would get canceled. Ugh, frustrating. But what Bart didn't know was that these people that he was talking to, they were all made up by Chandler. Not only were the email addresses completely fake, but the names of these people, they never even worked at Madison College. Bart, who clearly trusted his son, went back and forth with these people through emails for a while, but Chandler, he didn't really have a long-term plan here, okay? And his dad wasn't giving up. I mean, he knew he could never have these meetings between his father and fake administrators. And he also knew all these lies would come apart if like his dad just did a quick internet search, you know? Later, investigators would find out that the IP addresses of these emails matched the Halderson's home internet. On top of that, Chandler, when setting up these fake email accounts, used his own birthday to create the accounts. So, sloppy. And college wasn't the only thing Chandler was lying about. He also told his family and his girlfriend that he was working part-time for an insurance company. But he told everyone that he was he was broke. Like he, he never had money on him. And he told everyone he was broke because he wasn't receiving any of his paychecks. And they're like, well, why? That doesn't make sense, you know? So, you know, why? And he said, like, this was all because of an accounting error at the company and that the checks were going to the wrong address, something that he was trying to fix with the payroll department. But in reality, this job, it didn't exist. He was also making all of this up as well. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he's lying about this job, which makes sense as to why he's not getting paid. I just feel like it's confusing (laughs) because how did they not know? But then again, he was saying he was working from home because of COVID, but like, I don't know. He's lying about it, whatever. He's lying saying he has this part-time job and he doesn't, he's lying about it. And I was like, damn, like lying about having a part-time job at an insurance company is the most boring lie I've ever heard. Right? Like, at least, uh, you think he would lie about like a cool job, but that's, well, okay, that's what he lied about. But eventually he would lie about having a cool job. So Chandler told everyone that he was done with school. And he said that after um, being done with school, he had actually received a really big job offer to work at Elon Musk's company, SpaceX. Yeah, okay to step up, right? That's a lie. So that's a lie. So he's telling everyone, his family, his girlfriend, that this is happening. Now, of course, there is no job at SpaceX, but that didn't stop Chandler from like planning to move to Florida to start this fake job. Like he was really serious about moving to Florida. And he asked his girlfriend at the time, Catherine, like, do you wanna move with me? We can move together. And she's like, oh my God, yeah, I support you. I love you. Like. 
Hell yeah, she agreed. So the two of them, they start looking at houses together online. This is very exciting. He told his girlfriend that his starting salary would be $80,000 a year, which was much higher than his fake insurance job with its fake payroll problems, but it's good money. So they start looking at houses in their price range. But much like the college Zoom meetings, you know, how they were all canceled, Chandler like had to find a way out of his promises to move to Florida. Like he's just getting himself into bigger and bigger lies. So, whoops. Well, with like no other job waiting for, for him, Chandler got into an accident before the move could happen. Now, I don't know if this was like a real accident or a planned accident, but he got into an accident. You see, he fell down the stairs in his parents' house and after falling down the stairs, he immediately went to the hospital. He goes to the hospital and then he comes back and he claimed that the doctors diagnosed him with a head injury so severe that it would and slash or could cause paralysis. Yeah, paralysis. Sorry, I had a paralysis. It could cause paralysis. <laughs> it's not funny, but like, you know. Now, if that wasn't enough, uh, he also said the injury had caused him to suffer from a brain bleed, a brain aneurysm, nerve damage, and a spinal injury. Wow, I know, very bad accident he must have had, huh? Now, because of all of these awful injuries he had received, he told his parents and also his girlfriend, Catherine, that he would not be able to drive or even fly, so there was no way for him to get to Florida. Okay, so he tells everyone like, oh, I have to postpone my job at SpaceX, but don't worry everyone, the job is gonna be held until I make a full recovery. So he's telling everyone that the company said like, it's okay, heal, and when you're ready, you can come right back and we'll still have the job open for you. Anyway, after the injury, Chandler would wear a neck brace, you know, to help with like the, all the symptoms he was experiencing. Later, however, a doctor who had seen Chandler would testify that he had only been diagnosed with a mild concussion from this fall. Hmm. Chandler even underwent multiple scans for his injuries, but they showed that like nothing was wrong with him. He had been given a neck brace by the doctors, but it was only because he said he was experiencing like a lot of pain in both his head and his neck. He was then told by doctors at the hospital to follow up with his primary care doctor within four to six weeks, which is like normal procedure for a mild concussion. But that was that. Everything else seemed to be uh, he was making up, which made me think like his fall was planned, but can't confirm or deny. So, you know, Chandler is at home, like supposedly recovering, just waiting for the opportunity to move and start his job, just wearing that neck, that neck brace. Meanwhile, his dad, Bart, was still getting the run around from like multiple administrators from Madison College. Bart, his dad, thought that Chandler like really needed his transcripts and like proof of some sort of certifications that he had taken in college in order to proceed with this job offer he had. So like, that's why he was so persistent in getting answers from the school. He didn't want Chandler to like, have to delay his career and like moving forward in his life. His dad was just being a real nice guy. Finally, on June 29th, 2021, Bart decided to call the school and speak to someone over the phone. Uh-oh. Yeah. You know, he was tired of the back and forth of the scheduling and then rescheduling these Zoom meetings that just never happened. He was sick of it. He's like, dude, let me just pick up the phone and call these people. So Bart did just that. He picks up the phone and he spoke to a man named Omar Job. And this was like the first real representative of the school that he had ever spoken with. Now Job was quick to explain to Bart that Chandler had, he, he had taken classes at Madison College, but the last one was two years earlier 
in the spring of 2019. Not only that, he actually had failed multiple classes and withdrew from the other classes he was enrolled in. He goes on to tell Bart that he had never been a full-time student and he had only received credit for like a couple of classes in the one year he attended. He's like, what? Like, what do you do? You find out that your your kid was, everything was a lie? Like, I don't know what I would do. What? Oh, it's so confusing. So then Bart is like, you know what? While I have you here, let me give you, he gives this guy Job. He's like, can I give you a few names of the administrators that I had been emailing with? Can you tell me who these people are? And that's when Job had confirmed that no one by those those names worked for the school. Not one. This guy, Job, then went on to explain that Chandler had a balance of $2,000 on his account, which is why he was not able to receive a transcript. So, I mean, at least that part was kind of true. Like Chandler couldn't really get a transcript from Madison College to show his parents because he owed a bunch of money. So, okay, after this phone conversation, Bart texted his son Chandler and said the following, quote, I spoke to Omar Job. I'm ready when you are. I think Chandler knows what's up. So these texts were sent from Bart to Chandler on June 29th, 2021. By July 2nd, both Bart and Krista were missing. Krista's mom, Bart's the dad. The person to, this, to discover this was a man named Daniel Kronginger. Daniel. And Daniel was a friend and coworker of Krista's. Now, we all need a friend like Daniel because Daniel was an investigator, okay? This man was like on the hunt immediately. When Chris didn't show up for work on July 2nd, Daniel, first thing he did was call her. And when she didn't pick up and didn't respond, Daniel said that he immediately became concerned. I mean, this was completely unlike Krista to miss work and it was even more unlike her to just like, not come in and then not explain why she didn't come in. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, this was out of her character, completely out of her character. Well, that same afternoon, Daniel, the investigator friend, went with his girlfriend over to the Halderson house. He wanted to see like, what was up with Krista? You know, where was she? He knocked on the door, but nobody answered. So he started looking around the house. I mean, looking like from the outside, you know? Investigator, I like it. So he starts looking around and he notices that both Krista and Bert's cars, they were both there and they were parked in the garage. It's like, okay, that's weird because like, you know, that should mean that they're home. So he went around to the back door to see if he could like see in, inside the house. Maybe he can get inside cause you know, maybe something happened. So he's kind of poking around and that is when he's met by, or he's met with Chandler. Chandler comes out and meets him. He's like, hey, and like offers up an explanation. Chandler tells Daniel that his parents had decided last minute to take a trip to the family cabin. Yeah, they went to the family cabin. What's the big deal? Now, it would be weird to for anyone to like take off on vacation without telling their job first, but it was a holiday weekend and like it was gonna be July 4th and the cabin was near a lake. So, you know, it would make sense for them to go to the cabin. He's like, okay, that's, it's weird. Daniel thought it was strange, but heading to the family cabin for the 4th of July weekend, it makes some sense. Plus, why would Chandler lie, right? <laughs> why would he lie, you know? So Daniel was like, okay, I guess. He had a weird feeling, but he understood and he left, but he kept in contact with Chandler over the weekend. Daniel also continued to call and text Krista, but he never got an answer from her. Daniel had texted Chandler like, I haven't heard from your mom, like, you know, is everything okay? And he, Chandler had like an answer for this too. He told Daniel that, you know, the cabin was remote and it had awful service. So she probably wasn't getting any of his calls, but he was sure that she would get back to him when she could. So relax. So a couple days go by. Then it's Sunday, July 4th. Chandler actually texts Daniel, the investigator guy, the friend. Chandler asks if 
he could come over to Daniel's, you know, and spend it with him for the holiday. Daniel was like, sure, come on over, you know. So Chandler goes over to Daniel's house and, like, celebrates the 4th of July with his family, friends, whatever. And while they're hanging out, Chandler, like, reassures Daniel that he spoke with his parents, Bart and Krista, and that they were actually coming back the next day. So not to worry. They're on their way back. This made Daniel feel a little bit better because he had a conversation with Krista. Um, you know, they were friends or whatever. And Krista had told Daniel that she had this really important doctor's appointment on that coming Monday. And like, it was really important to her. And he knew that she wouldn't miss that appointment. So he's like, okay, she's going to be here tomorrow. She's going to be there for the appointment. Great. I could sleep better knowing like she's coming back. Okay, well, it's now that Monday. Krista missing. She didn't show up to work again. Oh, okay, weird. Day goes by, it's Tuesday. Chris doesn't show up for work again. Something's wrong. Daniel knows something's wrong. So Daniel is being the great friend, coworker that he is, is just extremely concerned. And I mean, from the beginning, none of this made any sense to him. And he still hadn't heard anything back from her. So by Wednesday, he contacts Chandler and tells him, look, we need to file a missing persons report for both of your parents because like, this is weird, it's out of character, like uh, this doesn't make sense. So Chandler actually agrees and follows through with filing the report. Now this alone, I was very surprised because I was like, I, w I would think that Chandler would just make a fake email account and like try and delay Daniel, you know, but he didn't. Finally, maybe he's realizing that leaving paper trails of his lies, maybe isn't the best move. I mean, that's actually foreshadowing. He definitely does not learn any lessons, whatever. So Chandler went to speak with detectives about the last time that he had seen his parents, Bart and Krista. So in this new version of events, Chandler explained that he actually saw his parents get picked up by a couple that he didn't know. He's like, they came up, they picked them up, and that was it. All four of them supposedly went to the cabin for the holiday weekend. This would explain why both Krista and Bart's cars are still at the house because these two people picked them up and the four of them went to the cabin. Messy, messy, messy. He's not, he's just, well, if you haven't caught on, this guy's an idiot. It's like the next day, it's Thursday, July 8th. Chandler's older brother, Mitchell, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. You know, he's just believing that the family, that mom and dad had gone to the cabin. So they hadn't come back and Mitchell's like, dude, I'm gonna go drive up to the cabin and see if our parents are there and like see what's going on. So he goes himself. Mitchell also knew nothing about this trip that the parents were taking over the weekend. So, you know, he just wanted to get to the bottom of where in the world his parents could be. The police actually meet Mitchell at the cabin and all of them quickly agree that by the looks of things, like no one had been at the cabin recently. And of course, like there were no signs of Bert and Krista. Meanwhile, back in Windsor, Chandler was going through his neighborhood, like knocking door to door on all of his neighbor's doors. And he was asking his neighbors whether they had seen or heard anything from his parents, you know, like they're missing and have you seen them? Have you heard from them? Now there's actually like a bunch of footage of Chandler doing this, you know, going from door to door. It's from all the neighbors like ring doorbells and it's extremely creepy in retrospect. And even though Chandler was participating in the search for his parents, police, you know, they were already like starting to suspect his involvement in their disappearance. I mean, the story that he told them wasn't adding up to anyone. And also nobody was believing that he had actually talked to them over the weekend, you know, having that phone conversation, confirming that they were at the cabin and would be home soon. It didn't make sense. And the story of like some mystery couple arriving and like leaving with his parents also made no sense. They were so close. They all knew each other. Like he would know who picked them up because the family communicated. Okay. Also, when police go and like ask the neighbors, there's no evidence of anyone seeing anything like this. No one saw the parents, no one saw the cars, nobody saw anything. Chandler didn't seem to like build a credible lie for his parents' disappearance. And any scrutiny and the whole thing would just completely fall apart. 
And honestly, it was starting to. Yeah, it was starting to fall all apart because this time it wasn't his dad doing any of the digging. It was now the police. So Chandler was pulled into a police interview on July 8th. And this time he came ready with another new story. This one was about his parents rushing off to the cabin to handle a plumbing emergency that was happening there. Oh yeah, plumbing emergency. But the police were like, oh, that's weird because we had just been to the cabin and there was no evidence of there being any kind of plumbing emergency. So they know like, okay, something's up with this kid, right? So they turned up the heat a little bit and their interview was now turning into an interrogation. I can't tell you what we know, but we know you're not telling us the truth. We know your parents are no longer with us. Okay, and we know the reason why. You need to tell the truth about what happened and just tell us why it happened. So Chandler, he actually, surprisingly, asked for a lawyer. I know, I was like, wow, that's rare. So can we do that? Okay, they're okay. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Lawyer, I'm sorry. Say it again, Lawyer. But he asked for a lawyer and that ended that conversation. But luckily the police could arrest him at that time. And it wasn't for murder, no. Not, I mean, not yet. I mean, they were still gathering evidence. So instead he was placed under arrest for providing false information about a missing person. Illegal. Oh yes. I mean, good, because like, who knows what this kid's gonna do. I don't know how to contour my nose. I don't know why I try. So at the same time that police are interviewing Chandler, <laughs> I saw a huge break in the case was unfolding. So there was a farmer, no, I'm sorry, a farm owner who reported to the police that she had actually seen Chandler on her property just a few days before her parents were reported missing. Oh yeah. She had spotted him leaving the wood line and noted that he was acting strange and it was just strange in general. Police, they go and search the area and like she shows in this certain area that he was at, she points it out to them and they go and they search this area and it would not take them long. It was like very quickly, they discovered a male torso, just the torso. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On July 10th, the remains were identified and it turns out the torso belonged to Bart Halderson. Ugh. So Chandler was charged with both the murder as well as the dismembering and hiding of Bart's body. But in their search, police had not yet discovered the remains of Krista Halderson. Now at this time, she was still considered missing. So the police had hoped that like, maybe she's still alive. So the county sheriff then held a press conference asking the community to help them like locate Krista. So this is where Chandler's girlfriend, Catherine, comes into play. So apparently Catherine was aware that Chandler in the past had like cheated on previous girlfriends. I guess he had like told her this. And because of this, she was always a little, you know, she had her eye, she was looking out for him, okay? Mm. So they had agreed that like to share locations or whatever on Snapchat specifically. So she would often go onto Snapchat and check on his location, see where he was. Oh yeah. She actually had his location available on Snapchat on July 3rd. And when she's like going to look to see what he was doing that day, she noticed that Chandler was near the Wisconsin River. Ris Wisconsin River. Ooh, Wisconsin River. There we go. Now, hmm, odd, weird, she thought. Hmm. He never communicated to her that like he would be by the Wisconsin River. Like, what's he doing? So she thought it was so weird that she ended up taking a screenshot of his location, you know, to bring it up to him later. Like, what was this about? What were you doing? Who were you with? What's her name? But you know what? Okay, so she ends up going to police and she hands over the screenshot she took of Chandler on Snapchat, right? Thinking that it would be maybe helpful in some kind of way. And boy, was she right. It was very helpful. Detectives, they use that location and go search the area. And that's where they discovered the remains of Krista Holderson. Yep, Snapchat, because of the Snapchat location. Oh, 
Thank God for the girlfriend, huh? Mm -mm 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 -mm. So this is when Chandler was charged with her murder as well. His mom. Ooh, Chandler's in trouble. Yep, he sure is. What an idiot. I mean, I couldn't imagine how hard it must be to realize that your boyfriend's a piece of shit and that he potentially murdered his family. You know, like, so handing that over must have not been easy, but good thing she did, right? Good for you, girl. So Chandler ended up deciding to plead not guilty to both of the murders. Because he decided to plead not guilty, we still don't have like an exact account of what happened to the, the parents. But based on the evidence that was collected by police, they believe that Chandler killed both of his parents at their own home in Windsor. For starters, when the coworker slash friend Daniel had first gone to the house to look for Krista, you know, he was like looking through the windows and stuff. And when he was doing that, he noticed that a coffee table, like in the living room area, was flipped over. The weekend of the disappearance, Chandler had been messaging his girlfriend, Catherine. And at some point he like asked her to come over to his house, but he was like, can you bring a few things? He asked her to stop and pick up some ice, hydrogen peroxide, and a Swiffer. He said that this was because he had hurt himself on the glass partition that was in front of the fireplace. Now, when she got there, she did see that the glass partition thing, it was broken, like he said. So she's like, okay, whatever. So she ended up staying the night at the house, but Chandler was like really quick to have her leave the next morning. He told her it was because he had a ton of chores that he had to do that day. So Catherine was kind of like, mm, that's weird, chores. So that's why she like looked at his location on Snapchat to see like, what was he really doing? And that's also why she thought it was weird that he was out by the river because what kind of chores would lead you to uh, standing by the river, you know? Mm-hmm, smart. Authorities believe that Chandler had already murdered his parents by the time that Catherine had come and like spent the night that night, which is fucking creepy. So once he had killed, this is according to authorities and like the theory they put together, once he killed Bart and Krista, he went about like trying to dispose of their bodies. So then he dismembered them. His own fucking parents, he dismembers them. And then, and then he tried to burn them in the fireplace. His own parents in their own home by their own son in their fireplace. What the actual fuck? Yep. What, what, your own kid? Oh, hell no. I know this is like f foul, morbid, whatever, but like I was thinking, didn't it smell? Didn't it smell? Didn't it smell? Didn't any of the neighbors smell anything? You know, like, right? And like when Catherine came over, didn't it smell? There was no smell? Yeah. So during the trial, they had showed security footage from one of like um, the Halderson's neighbor's cameras, you know? And at night, it had showed a flickering light. And this had suggested to the court that a fire was lit inside the Halderson's home during that weekend. Now, not weird, they had a fireplace, blah, blah, blah. But it was weird because this was 4th of July weekend. So, kind of weird to have a fire lit during the summer, you know? So police would also discover that there were more than 200 bone fragments in that fireplace. There was also evidence that Chandler had bought 20 pounds of ice and a tarp. Most likely it was to transport the bodies to where they would, you know, eventually be found. So when police found Bart's body, there was actually an oil drum that was nearby. And inside of it, they found tools. They found tools that had both Bart and Krista's blood on them. And it's assumed that these tools, you know, are what Chandler used to dismember them. 
Back at the house, there was also evidence of a cleanup happening, or it did happen, tried to happen. The floors, you know, they looked clean, but they used that luminol to reveal that there were actually like traces of blood that were cleaned up. Because of the state of her remains, the medical examiner couldn't say exactly how Krista Halderson died, but it's believed that Bart was shot and killed with a gun that was like near, it was found near his remains. You know, they don't know exactly how Chris, but it's assuming probably the same way, you know? Along with like all of this evidence, the prosecution also showed like the emails that Chandler had sent pretending to be various college administrators. And they explained the, to the court, you know, the many lies that he had told about his part-time job and his job offer at SpaceX, as well as the injuries that he embellished after falling down the stairs. Mm -hmm. It was all coming out. They also had a bunch of like insanely incriminating Google searches that were on Chandler's phone. Of course, of course, cause he's messy. Like, on the morning and even the afternoon of July 8th, it was like the same day that the cabin was being searched, Chandler was like going around talking to his neighbors. On that same day, he Google searched the following. Body found Wisconsin. Woman's body found in Wisconsin. Wisconsin dismembered body found. Dead body found in Wisconsin. Body found in Milwaukee River, 2021. Bart and Krista. Bro. Even the, the Google searches alone just tells you everything you need to know, right? I mean, Jesus, he's, he's Googling these, thing, these things. And like, first he's looking for a body being found. But by the end, he specifies the year. And <laughs> just in case, you know, just in case he missed something. And then he names his parents. So it's like... If you didn't think he was guilty, there you go. That's all you need, right? Like I said before, Chandler pled not guilty to all the charges that were against him. And along with like all of the evidence, the prosecution theorized that Chandler had killed his parents after they confronted him on his lies about attending college. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm sure we can all guess that's that's what happened. I mean, it feels like a natural guess here. Like since we have Bart's text to his son, clearly showing that he was like ready to confront Chandler. But Chandler did not testify in his own defense. So there's no way to like, to know why everything happened the way it did, right? Plus, even if he did testify, let's be honest, what are the chances that he would tell the truth? Right, exactly, none. He wouldn't tell the truth. He um, definitely doesn't have a very trustworthy track record, to say the least, right? Oh, God. Ultimately, the jury only needed to deliberate for two hours after this case. Chandler Halderson was found guilty of all charges and was then sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Oh yeah, baby. Bye. <sighs> what an idiot, what a dumbass, what a piece of fucking shit. What a shithead. When the judge had asked Chandler if he would like to make a statement, he then instead asked if any lawyers were listening. And if they were, he requested that they contact him about an appeal. Oh yes, oh yes, cause he's innocent, he claims. Apparently there was at least one lawyer who was listening and Chandler actually did get a new lawyer. An appeal was filed, oh yeah. And in April of 2023, Chandler did successfully have two of his convictions vacated. This was on procedural grounds and was only for the convictions relating to hiding his parents' body, bodies. His sentence actually remained the same. So, cool Chandler, cool. Good for you, man, you fuck. I mean, in the end, Chandler Halderson murdered his parents, Bart and Krista, for what? Because they all started to realize that he had been lying to them. Like, that's it. That's why he did it. That's how sick, that's how sick he is. Oh man, I just like the, like what? 
it, it's like not even, it's like, oh my God, that was his answer to murder his parents. And honestly, by the text messages, it didn't even seem like they were gonna, like that angry or they were gonna be that angry at him, right? I mean, they were just, sounded like his dad was just trying to be a freaking parent, feel like, figure out what was going on with his son. Wasn't gonna be the end of the world for him, I'm sure, okay? It sounded more like he was disappointed with his son, if anything else. That's what's really tragic about Chandler's actions is that his parents seemed like they wanted to support him and they did support him. And in return, he killed them. It, what a selfish piece of shit. I'm sorry. Sorry, but you are. And I think one of the saddest things of all is that the other brother, Mitchell, doesn't have either of his parents and doesn't have his brother. Wow, that's fucked up. I just like these stories don't, these cases don't, they just don't make sense, right? Like how does, in, in someone's brain, how do they go from like, you know what, the only answer right now is murder and I'm gonna get away with it. Because they don't think about the aftermath, that the lies are gonna catch up to them, that you're gonna get caught, sorry, but you are, you're gonna get caught, you're not gonna get away with it. You think you're gonna get away with it and what? No one's gonna come looking for your parents? Like, okay, well, Chandler will be in prison for the rest of his life. And, you know, just hope that the other brother, Mitchell, finds peace somehow, right? I don't know, it's hard, it's sad. Fuck, Chandler sucks ass. Damn. Well, that my friends is the awful, awful story about Chandler Halderson and um, what he did to his fucking family. His, okay, yep, yeah, his parents. All for what? Exactly. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down below. I don't know what you can say other than F that guy, right? Jeez. What is it that goes through their head, huh? I don't know. Let me know down below. Yeah, okay, well, thanks for hanging out with me today. <laughs> Don't have kids, they might turn on you. You don't know. Um, just kidding. Let me know who you want me to talk about next week, and what are your thoughts? Let me know. Just let me know. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Check out the description box down below if you want to know what I used. I like this look. It's pretty. Do I love it? I think so. I'm gonna wear it and see. You know, as the day goes on, we'll see. I think it's pretty. But other than that. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You make good choices. Make good choices. Stop lying. It's okay to come clean. And please be safe out there. All right? Okay. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you guys later. Goodbye.